Greetings, good people of the world, and a very warm welcome to you all. Now, one of my most popular videos was a Cartier tank that I restored a few years back on the channel. So I've decided to revisit this Cartier tank because don't you know, tanks are back in fashion. No, I don't mean those magnificent machines of death and destruction used to pummel schools, hospitals and churches. No, I mean the Cartier Tank Louis, which in fact was designed in 1917, inspired by a French military tank. But I wouldn't dream of using such a connection to capitalise on raising awareness of current affairs. Heavens no, that would be too irresponsible and uncomfortable. But being the shameless capitalist that I am, I'll use the connection for some extra clicks. That's much more prudent and acceptable. Now, the initial video I did in 2020, I restored a manual wind tank must, which needed replating, and the video was so popular that other famous people such as Supercar Blondie featured it on their channels, amongst other social media channels such as DIYZ, Board Panda, and even the Insider covered it on their channels. There's even an IMDB page of that video. Now, I mentioned this buzz and interest because I have a friend who works right in the belly of the watch retail industry for one of the largest conglomerates. We had a conversation about the popularity of that video and he implied that Cartier received so many inquiries that six months later they decided to reissue the tank must after it was discontinued 40 years ago. Personally, I don't believe this to be true, but if it is true, then Cartier, where's my drink, bro? I posted a great article on my community page recently about the black arts of horological Hasbro and how watch brands tell a lot of mistruths and rewrite history to lure in customers. Spread a rumour long enough and eventually it will stick. So let's see how far this little rumour goes, eh? Whether it's true or not, I used to buy these pieces prior to the video for around 130 to 150 pound in this condition, but now I can't even take my family out for a cheeseburger for that kind of money. The vintage tank Vermeils cost around a thousand pound and the reissues are around three thousand pound. I strongly recommend you go and have a look at that original video for some more history on the Cartier tank. So it looks like somebody's had a good rummage inside here. You can see there's a cover missing. So let's just remove this battery first. Then to see if it's actually the battery that's dead. Yep, which is dead. So that's the difference between a working battery and the one that was in there. Dead. So let's just hope it's the battery. Can't hear anything. And this is what it's supposed to sound like with the watch that's working. So this piece isn't working and it seems like it's got a dodgy circuit board. Now the Cartier Tank Louis was usually made in precious metals, but during the quartz crisis, Cartier released an affordable version with ETA movements and quartz versions, branded as the Mousse de Cartier in Vermeil cases, which were basically sterling silver with a gold plated finish. The tank was worn by so many famous people, such as JFK, Princess Diana, Clark Gable, Muhammad Ali and many others. So you can imagine how many people would have been influenced by these endorsers to go out and buy one of these more affordable models back in the day. But the Vermel cases being mostly silver would over time oxidize and tarnish and show through the gold plating. And the gold plating would also disintegrate over the years leaving a lot of owners without any hope as in most cases Cartier wouldn't restore them and if they did it would cost a limb. But even limbs are cheaper in some parts of the world. I heard there was a sale on penny a dozen in Giza or Gaza, wherever it's called, who cares? So maybe that restoration video gave a lot of owners hope for their stored away tanks. Now the initial video was of a mechanical manual wind piece, but is there hope for a quartz version? And is there an alternative way of restoring the case without ethnically cleansing the whole case back to bare metal and then rebuilding it again? Well, the piece I've decided to do is a quartz version, and I'll be showing you how to remove deep scratches without polishing or damaging the gold plating. How small that can of pinion is. That's not pinky. Look, let's see your pinky. Very pinky there. 
You got some long worm like fingers. <gasps> Where did you get those fingers from? They're not mine. Look at them, look, look at them long wormy fingers you've got. <laughs> <laughs> That's only your pinky finger. Stretch your fingers out. Wow, well, look, you got alien fingers. They're not that nice. Like, they are? Got some alien fingers, bro. <laughs> So let's just remove the circuit and the coil and then we can remove all the mechanical bits and give it a service and source a new circuit hopefully the coil is okay and that one is small as well and there's our circuit and we can remove the coil as well be very careful not to slip here Beautiful. Nice bit of finishing on that as well. Have a look what's inside the Cartier course movement, shall we? There'll be a couple of wheels and a step rotor. Nothing to get excited about. Calm down, dear. It's the step rotor. I knew a student once who did a couple of weeks work experience. At Cartier and he said when a quartz watch comes in for a service all Cartier do is throw out the old movement and stick a new one in well business is business I suppose and from a business standpoint it is more convenient and probably more economical to swap out the movement than to service it looks like a baby seal <laughs> a technician can probably do 10 movement swaps in the time it would take to service one watch I would love to get my hands on those movements they throw away. So many spare parts here. Cartier, if you're listening and you need to responsibly and sustainably recycle your movements, then holler at me. Bald rooster there. Setting lever. Looks like a Coldplay album cover. You know which one I'm talking about. Oh, my hands are shaking today. And that's it, ladies and gents. So there's all our parts. I'm pretty sure whoever's designing these parts is a fan of Egyptian hieroglyphs. Look at that. That looks like the Sphinx. That looks like a Anubis and all the other fellas that you see on them Egyptian hieroglyphs. Cute. Look at all my ETA movements that I collect over the years. All these are good for parts. There's so many parts. I try not to throw anything away. What I'm interested in today is my stash of Cartier parts. So we've got some Ebel movements there, which make the movements for Cartier on these quartz ones, especially. They also use stuff from ETA. I'm sure we can find something in here. We've got some circuits, we've got coils. See, Ebel 66. So that's a straight movement swap I can put in, which is the movement we have in our watch. But we'll repair the one we've got. We've got some bridges there and some screws. So there's another one there. Bell. So I'm sure we have enough there to fix the other one. Some type of detailing. One just says Ebel and one says Cartier 66. That's probably an Ebel circuit. And I have a blue one. 
which works so we've got all our parts let's get the rest of it in the wash these are all the bits that are not gonna go in the wash Now on the last Cartier tank, I went all beast mode in the case, let the kids chuck it about and help me polish it. But on this one, I'll try a sim more sympathetic approach to get all this tarnish and this oxidization, I think. And try and remove that without touching it with the polishing mop first and see how it looks. And if it looks like there's a lot of gold beneath it, We'll just leave it as it is. 20 microns on there. I've got my bowl with aluminium foil. Put a bit of salt in there. And we'll add some biocarbonate soda. Trouble will add some. You want to just shake it in? Shake it. Mm. Tell me to stop. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, not too fast. Go on. Stir it. Wow. Well, mix it up. Yeah. yeah, put it in. Go on then. Hang it in. Hang the other one. Okay, now let's see what happens to all this. Should give us a chemical re Oh, that's looking good already, look. Wow. Oh, all the stuff. Look at that. That's looking nice already within a few seconds. Oh, what the one? Let's see that one. Mmm, smells kind of like fart. That was almost instantaneous. Ooh, that's hot. Hmm? Look at that. Yeah, that's come out quite nice already. All that readiness is gone. Gunk that was on there is gone. See that? And it looks quite nice underneath. All the gold is intact. Just some bruising. It's got a lot of marks and bruises to it. Up close it doesn't look great. From afar it's not bad. But when you scrutinize it up close on the macro, you can see there are so many little pits and things to the surface so instead of polishing it to remove that at the risk of removing more gold i'm going to try a different technique so i've got this dinosaur tooth here which is actually in a gate stone and what i'm going to do is try and burnish it and see if i can flatten out all those marks without actually removing any gold whatsoever Let's try a little spot here and see what happens. I think it's working. You can see that we have a lot of the marks still here. Or I've been rubbing it. We've got a few big ones on the back. Let's see if I can get rid of those. So you have to apply a lot of pressure with this method. But after about an hour with the stone, I finished it with the rouge cloth and managed to make it look somewhat better than before. It will never be as good as the replating method, but if your gold plating is intact and you have lots of dings and bruises, then this is a great way to achieve a nice finish. Let's start off with the stator.
can get that stop lever in. Oh, take her easier. Come on, let's go. Make sure you turn everything off. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the final finish. 
A lot of those tiny dings and marks have been flattened out and we've even managed to bury those large scars. It's not a concourse finish, but very respectable for a do-it-yourself refurb using a bit of salt and soda and a an agate stone. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one and found it useful. If you did, then please like, share and subscribe as I think I'm on YouTube's naughty list this year. But I made my own list. Yes, there is a list. And on that list, I wish for peace and good health for you all. I wish for the freedom of the oppressed, full bellies for the hungry. If you're sleeping in the cold under the stars, I wish for a roof over your head and a cozy warm bed. I wish for justice for the wronged. I wish for the truth to expose the lies. I wish but nothing for the best for you in this life, whoever you are and whatever your tribe. And wishing good for one tribe doesn't mean wishing bad for another. Free the watermelons and look after each other. Ta-ra! My hands are shaking today Because my blood sugar is so low My wife hasn't fed me So I'll just cry and sing My wife hasn't fed me Cause I didn't buy her a diamond ring Can you sing along with me? No Sing it, it'll be fun Cause in the last video I sang the song say Oh, go on, one, two, three. Oh, <laughs> sing, you better sing, that's a famous song. Why? Say, oh, why? Say, sing. <laughs> say, oh, sing, oh. sing, say, oh, no, go on, say, oh, why? my hands are shaking today. Oh, I want to say, say, oh, nicely, though, yeah, yeah, say, oh. Why? Say it. Why though? Say, say ho. Oh. oh. No, not like that. Say ho. Oh. Ho. Oh. My hands are shaking Why today. Why that? Just me. Say my hands are shaking today. My hands are shaking today. No, say it with nicely, with joy. You'll see when I read it. Oh. I might not even use it. Just say my that hands. Was so are, my hands are shaking today. My hands are shaking. My hands are shaking today. My hands are shaking today. Because my blood is shaking. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs>